Okay, so I just want to show you how to build these. Um, it's not really intuitive. Uh, I'm using this one here called Remote Insensitivity. The other custom is uses the regular 52 card deck. So this one uh, has cards with words on it, and they're slightly larger cards. I tried messing around with the size of the cards, and it didn't work, and I, I haven't figured out how to do that. Anyway, so this game, this is their setup for this game, and I don't want this setup. I certainly don't want these words, so I'm going to change them. So I'm going to hit the suitcase. The suitcase is the edit button, so I tell my students don't touch the suitcase. And here, these rectangular shapes here, these are placeholders where you can put the cards. Now, when we were playing the game, did you see how the cards kind of snapped to that placeholder? And this is the deck of cards, but the placeholder, now the placeholder is just a placeholder. What we want, and with a placeholder, you can enter the text. So I can call this, this one might say discard pile, and this one, I might put my name as one player and either populate names or just say player one, two, three, or four, or whatever. If there's, if you want the players to be able to hold their winning packs. The circle is the card deck. So the card deck is made up of a template and words that populate that template. So I'm going to change my deck template. So it comes up and the card has a card face and a card back. And the card back right now says remote insensitivity. That's the name of their game. I don't want that. I'm going to change it and I'm going to call it uh, short vowels. I want it centered and the largest font possible, which is not near large enough for my liking. Okay, and I think this thing like moves it up and down, but I, I can't get the font any bigger than that. And I can have a rounded corner. Okay, so that's the card back. Now the face of the card, the part with the words on it, it has something they call a response. So kind of like apples to apples or the uh, Cards Against Humanity, there's a prompt and then there's a response. So they're looking for something called a response in, uh, they want to put responses into the template. So my choices are I can make a file and call all of what I want put in responses, or I can change this to say like short vowel words or whatever, but it likes responses, so I'm just going to leave it there. And the idea here is that this is different, different for every card. So every card will choose a different response. The part that's the same is the like the color or the whatever. So different for card. Oops, now I better put response back in. There. There. Okay, that is the template. Now I want to populate the template with my responses or my words. So to do that, I need to go, oh my goodness, I closed it, of course. I need to go to a Google Sheets or a... Um, So I'm going to go to Google Sheets where I have a list of words. Come on, open. Please, please forgive me while I become impatient. Here we go. So here's the list of words that I have. Uh, 
I have in here. And you know what? I don't want all these. So I have been making Uno cards. So let me get rid of some of these. Come on. Oh, it's still, still loading. Sorry. So I'm going to, I'm not going to spend the time getting rid of everything, but let's say it's still working. So anyway, just like using, um, I would do my printed cards using a template. I would use the Avery business cards template and I would uh, use this list of cards, this list of words, and then I would use the Avery template on for my business cards and then just print the words onto the business cards and it was so much faster than uh, printing it out to cardstock and then having to cut them all so they were nice and even and you know, I didn't have any too big or too small. Anyway, so this is my list of words for playing my Uno back here. Uh, actually, that's just my list of, well, I'll just do this as an example. This is just a list of my short A words. But let's pretend this is my list. I would have to insert here a row. My first row that it expects would have to match what the template is looking for, and it's looking for responses. Singular, I think, right? So there, so if the first word in this column matches that on the template, it'll say, okay, these are the words that's going to populate wherever it's looking for a response. So then I'd go to file and I have to download a comma separated value sheet. So file download CSV and it's going to download to my computer go. Come back up into my new game here. Click on my circle. And I'm going to hit add and remove cards. Now this is where I'm going to say let's take that CSV and pop it in here. So as it adds and removes cards, right now it has all these responses that it had populated, 499 of them. So and I'm like, I don't want those. I want my words. Come down here to the bottom and you click import CSV and it tells you you're going to lose everything else that's in this deck. I'm like, fine, I don't want your weird brother and whatever it is on here is the responses. I want my short vowels. So I do that. I want that one. And I say open, and if I typed the, oh, there we go. Do you see that? The words that I had there populated my cards. But it says the words are in there, but I have to tell it how many of the cards I want. I want all of them plus one. There we go. I now have 17 cards because I had just chosen my, my short A. I didn't have to list up all my vowels. But let's take a look at the cards. Okay, go back, click back on with this. And now I see that my cards are here. And, ooh, let me change that. Those are too little and not centered. So this button here is the recall and shuffle button. And I go back and let me edit that. So here, I'm gonna edit the template. And I want this, I want this guy here, the response to be centered and larger. There. And there's ways of changing the color and whatnot. You can add other layers, you can add extra images here. But this takes long enough for me. And let's say I want to change these guys and I want to, I can have like two decks going like I did when I had my AEIOU and then I uh, was able to choose words from my deck. 
but this can all be changed. And you can move your placeholders around. You can get rid of your placeholders. Yeah, I can call it whatever I want to call it. I can remove it. I can remove these things here. These are like for you to take your winnings to that. I can remove that. I can add extra. I want to add an extra uh, card holder. So it assumed a smaller card, but once I use it, it would become the size of the actual cards that are here. It knows how to do that. And let's say I want to add onto this, show the recall button so that I can recall this deck and shuffle it, whatever. So there's ways of modifying this, customizing it quite a bit. Uh, it's just a little cumbersome uh, figuring, it took me a while figuring out what it was expecting for uh, populating the cards here. Okay, so change to your template and then do your add and remove. Pull over your comma separated values uh, file from your computer. Make sure that the first line in that file is either responses or else whatever your first line in has to be what you call in the template uh, here. So if I want to call this short, short vowel, then that's what I would put at the top line of my, uh, before I make it a CSV. Okay, anyway, that's a quick how to make the card deck. I hope that gives you possibilities. It takes a little while. Oh, I should mention that um, I should mention that you cannot create a deck and then share that deck with someone else. So if you said, "Hey, Emily, can I use your deck?" I'd have to say no because you can't take my deck. Um, not yet, anyway. They say there's features coming up, but you know, they're not thinking about teachers when they make this. They're thinking about people playing games. Um, so you can't share your deck. You have to make your own deck. But, and once you make your deck, hold on to the, uh, the room number. It gives you a room number. And save it. Do a, you know, I save mine to my one tab. I save all of the things I do in one tab. And they say that active rooms they allow rooms to stay active for two weeks and uh, if you come back to the game within two weeks your game's still there and and if it's an old unused game they close out that room so what i've been trying to do is like every week i've been playing the games but every week i'll just go in and open up all the decks and move a card around and then close them all just so that it's remains active. So I hope that helps. Um, and that's all I know. If I find out more, I will, I'll try to post more. <laughs>